In this video, I'll introduce some of the NetCDF import improvements in Origin 2021B. I'll cover importing aggregate daily mean data, importing consecutive seasonal means, importing aggregate seasonal means for two different time ranges and calculating the difference, and performing a linear fit of monthly mean data. Let's start with importing aggregate daily mean data. I'll go to the data menu, choose connect to file, and net CDF. I have a file with precipitation data that I'll select for import. And in the data connector browser dialog, I'll select the PR three-dimensional variable, selecting it for import, and specifying import options. In the import options, I'll leave the from and to dates as they are and choose averaging, sampling across years, and set my interval to D for daily. I'll click OK and then OK again to import the data. With the data imported, we can use the slider in the matrix book to navigate our imported data. We can see that we have one matrix object per day of year. Now let's look at importing consecutive seasonal means. I'll go to the data menu, connect to file, net CDF. I have an air temperature data file I'd like to import. In the data connector browser dialog, I'll select the air three-dimensional variable for import and open the import options dialog. I'll set my from date to be March 1900 and enable averaging. This time I'll choose consecutive for sampling and Q for interval, which is quarter or seasonal in this case. Again, click OK and OK to import. Now when I scroll with my slider, I can go from one consecutive season to the next. Now let's look at importing aggregate seasonal means for two time ranges and calculating the difference. From the data menu, connect to file, net CDF. I'll select the sea surface temperature data file and select the SST variable for import. I'll open the Import Options dialog. I want to select a period of March 2000 to March 2020. I'll enable Averaging, Sampling Across Years, Interval Q for Quarter or Seasonal. I'll perform a longitudinal shift and a latitude flip and click OK and OK to import. I'd like to import another time range, but rather than start all over, I'm simply going to duplicate this matrix book, open the import options, and change my time range. To March of 1930 to March of 1950 and click OK to import the new time range. We can see that both matrix books have the four seasons. I now I want to subtract the 1930 to 1950 data from the 2000 to 2020 data. I'll go to the matrix menu and select subtract and open the dialog. For my A matrix, I'll choose the 2000 to 2020 data. And for my, my B matrix, I'll choose the 1930 to 1950 data. For my subtraction method, I'll choose all corresponding in both sheets. I'll set my recalculate to auto 
and click OK to perform the calculation. We have a new matrix book containing the subtracted data. Let's create a plot. I want to customize this plot, but in the interest of time, I'll pause this video. With the graph now customized, I want to add a map outline of the world. I'll go to the Insert menu and choose World Map. We can customize the color of the World Map overlay by selecting it and from the mini toolbar choosing a different color. Now we can convert this graph into a browser graph. From the mini toolbar, I'll select the browser graph button. And in the browser graph window, I'll display long name column. Now, as we switch from season to season, we can see the graph update. Finally, let's look at performing a linear fit of monthly mean data. From the data menu, I'll select connect to file, net CDF, and I'll select my air temperature data file. In the data connector browser dialog, I'll select my air variable to import and open the import options dialog. For my from date, I'll select July 1st, 1900 and leave my to date to be end. I'll enable time axis skipping with the settings to read one record and skip 11. This will read one month, July, skip 11 and read July again, and so forth to the end of the file. Click OK to import the data. With the data imported, we can now perform a linear fit of the stack of July data. I'll go to the Matrix menu, choose Linear Fit, and open the dialog. I'll set my Recalculate mode to Auto. This ensures that when the data is re-imported, the Linear Fit will update. I have the option to calculate the intercept, the slope, or both. I'll select the slope. After the stack of matrices have been linearly fit, a new matrix book is created, reflecting the slopes. The slopes reflect the rate of change in air temperature. Now let's go back and re-import the data to show that the linear fit will keep up with the change. I'll open the Import Options dialog and I'm going to perform a longitudinal shift to, to rearrange how the data is displayed. When I click OK, the data is imported again and the linear fit recalculates. That's it for this video, but we'll be releasing more NetCDF improvement feature videos in the future. Thank you for watching.